in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Brian Mason and it is time of prayer. First of all, we're going to start with a country I not brought before you before, that of Bhutan. A little country, but yet one that I prayed about. Uh, before the Lord, about, I believe, a few months ago now. And that it said, well, haven't got anybody from Bhutan, don't know any, haven't, no contact in Bhutan. So what has happened? Only of recent, recent weeks, I actually have someone. And that is an answer. Prayer means answer. And it is going on, and that is the challenge before each one of us, that day by day, to bring that going on with God going further with him, because if we're just stagnating, if we're standing still, then we're not going on. So. This dear brother, Samir Thakur, he's made contact and he says, My dear brother, I mailed the son out of five brothers and one sister, and son of a strong idol worshipper. And since for five years, day and night, and facing persecution, Six times my Bible has been torn and thrown and burned. I have been always been asked by the police and given, shocked here, all my younger brothers. Always underestimate me and always hurt me. And my parents are trying to marry me to an idol worshipper so that I can turn back to their religion. Dear brother, I want to know more about Christ, and I try daily to study and open the Bible. But it's something impossible to open or pray to Almighty Lord of Lords, and it's very hard for me to live each day without prayers and Bible. Satan always tries his best and I'm seeking a church where I can read and learn the Bible and also work so that I can of no, no one nor of the world but only of God. I mean church, a Bible-related college where I can learn and be encouraged. That is, it is very hard for me to even keep the Bible. Romans chapter 8 and verse 35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Nothing will separate from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And dear Samir, now as an intercessor, it's been identified with this, this dear, dear young man, as it turns out. Um, age 24 he is. And that identification has been to look to stand with him. Yes, from here, been able to email him that which he can see on his phone, that which will encourage him. Email the book, Rhys Howell's Intercessor. And he's also been e emailed the first, first two parts of the course Evangelical Theology. And it was quite to 
well, of God. It may, may come rather as a amazement, but uh, it was on, on Friday evening that they suddenly uh, received contact from Samir, asking if I got time, time, half an hour to spare with him, to be able to speak. And there he was, amidst all that, the difficulties in Bhutan with his family, saying that he gets followed wherever he goes. And he was able to speak with me. And it was quite amazing. He had a great depth of spiritual understanding, a hunger there, a thirst there for the living God. And he wants to know more and more, doesn't want to give up, wants to do that which is in the perfect will of Almighty God. He was able to say that he has permission to go to study at a college in North India from later on this month. And that's what he's looking for, where he can go whilst in India, to a Bible-based church, Bible-based teaching. Yes, from all these thousands of miles away we can send him that which will encourage him, that which will help him grow in the, in the Word, his understanding. But he needs to, to be able to go on day by day in the midst of great trials, great testings. And as I was able to say to him, God has a purpose. It wasn't offering him human sympathy. But God is preparing him for that which he wants to do with, in him and through him. And that he will look back in the years to come and see that it was God who took him along that path and brought him into a large place with himself. Heavenly Father, thank Thee for the life of, of Samir Thakur. That is, he's saying for five years that his Bible, during those years it's been taken from him, has been torn up, has been burnt. But yet, in the midst of it all, he has been determined to go on, determined to go further, and to determine to know no man save Christ Jesus and him crucified. A life wholly committed, totally committed to the will of God. A life which puts to shame that of the very self-centered, what calls itself Christianity, in the West. O oh God, keep thy hand upon Samir, both whilst he's in these remaining days as he's with his family in Bhutan, and then guide him perfectly through that time when he is studying in North India and melt the hearts, soften the hearts, convict the hearts of sin of his family, that they will be brought to the foot of the cross of Calvary, whether it be through vision or dream, whatever way that you open the hearts of, of his family, who have been resistant to thyself, and that they will come into the liberty of the sons of God. Instead of idol worshippers, that they will receive into their hearts the living God, having through repentance been, been brought to be cleansed through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
For this is asked, O Father, through his name and for thy glory. Amen. Got a report here from the Society for the Distribution of the Hebrew Scriptures. A report regarding distribution of the Scriptures in London, in England. And it's always such a, such a joy to, to read these reports. And the Scripture, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. That's from First Thessalonians chapter 5, and verses 5 and 6. And the report is by Joy Browning. I've actually met Joy Browning a few years ago, with her husband. How apt these words are for the days in which we live. And they help to motivate us in the work the Lord has given us to do. We continue to feel the pressure of the days and the lateness of the hour with regard to the dear Jewish people. Hatred towards them seems to increase weakly, not just in the world generally, but even in this country. However, we thank the Lord for the continued measure of peace, which enables us to continue the vital work of distributing the scriptures. Recently I read a poll, poll which showed that Amongst the general population, anti-Semitism is about 8%, but in certain ethnic, ethnic communities is 35%. Let us not concentrate on the, the discouraging news, for we have another report of the blessing and encouragement we experience amongst the Jewish people and indeed ourselves, as we continue the door-to-door -door work. Recently we travelled to Scotland, Holland and Northern Ireland. In all those places, friends of the work told us of the prayer they offer regularly for us as we work in the streets of London. We thank you. And or his prompting of that faithful prayer support. The Lord answers and works in his wonderful and mysterious ways. Please continue to uphold Mercia, Harriet, Roberta and myself for we all work together in this vital field we then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1. Having previously worked in roads around West, West Finchley, Woodside Park and North Finchley, we decided to return to where previously no one had been at home. Our first acceptance was from a young mother who came to the door with a beautiful baby boy in her arms. She gave us a lovely smile as she took a Tanaka with a CD and thanked us. When the first house accepts with such delight we are always spared on for the coming day. They receive the word with all readiness of mind. Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. On the opposite side of the road, we met an elderly man. 
when we rang the bell, he initially came to the side window, pulled back the curtain and smiled at us. Then he came to the door, singing as he opened it. He had a lovely bright face and received a tanica with a CD with great delight, saying, Thanks for calling. Following this, we saw a man working in his garden. As we spoke with him, we realized that he was not Jewish. But we were so thankful when he accepted a Trinitarian Bible Society New Testament and said with real joy, I'll give this to my daughter. We thank the Lord that many of the non-Jewish people we meet are so very pleased when we give a New Testament. One would think in these days of apostasy that this would not be the case. However, many people do seem pleased with the scriptures and we pray their willing hands will be turned into willing hearts to read the precious word of life by the operation of the Holy Spirit. We then went to some nearby sheltered accommodation. After introducing ourselves to a very kind and cheerful lady, we thanked the Lord as she accepted on behalf of the residents the Hebrew Scriptures and the large print Bible. This is very satisfying, as in a Jewish area, there are always Jewish folk in these centers, and how wonderful to give the opportunity at the end of their lives to read of their own Messiah. We know this happens, and have seen them reading the scriptures. We have just, give, just given with our own eyes. It is not often we meet a young Jewish woman dressed in a black leotard, looking as if she had just finished exercising. This was the case at the next door, and she immediately responded positively, saying, Oh, lovely, that's very kind of you, as she reached out to take the scriptures. At the end of the next road we met an angry, middle-aged woman, who glared at us and said, No, thank you banging the door behind her. She had a very harassed, troubled face, and we both felt sorry for her. We later prayed for her to have another opportunity to hear of her own Messiah, who alone can bring the peace she needs, and ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. St. John's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 40. When we encounter such a person, which is not often, as you may think, we are amazed at the way the Lord gains a victory almost at the very next call, bringing glory to himself. Just a few doors away from this lady, we met a, a gracious young Jewish man with a beard and large, kind eyes. He asked us who we were and seemed to be searching us out, but with a beautiful expression on his face. He was delighted to take the scriptures, and after more conversation about the work and those who support it, he bowed slightly and said, Thank you very much. A few doors down from him, we met another young Jewish man. He just listened, didn't say a single word, but looked at us with lovely smiling eyes and received a tanica with a CD. The next call was rather sad, but one for which we would ask for your prayers. After we rang the bell and heard a dog barking, a young Jewish woman opened the door. She too, like the last young man, 
had the lovely open face with a smile. Oh, thank you very much, she said delightedly, as she took a tannica with a CD. However, ten minutes later, this same young woman came running down the street after us. I'm so sorry, she said, but my husband doesn't want it. He has the Zohar, that is, in brackets, Jewish mysticism literature. He is a bit weird about these things. I am really sorry because I would love to keep it, she said as she looked at the Tanaka. Then she continued, I feel it's rude of me to give it back to you with my husband. We said that of course we understand, but we gave her our compliment slip and said, if ever she wanted one, she could get in touch. Please do pray for her. She was really very interested, but obviously nervous of her husband's response. We pray he will be delivered from his interest in these things, which are so against the Lord's instructions to the Jewish people. Please pray that that they both will be motivated to study the scriptures of truth and find the one who alone can answer the spiritual needs they both so clearly exhibited, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, that is, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. We saw a sign for a progressive synagogue called Gates of Peace. The name Rabbi was a lady. We prayed about it and felt we should go in and offer a tanica for the use of the Rabbi, for maybe from it other requests may come. We walked up a narrow driveway to a small building, rang the bell, and as the door lock was released, we stepped into a small office. The secretary was not very friendly, and we thought we would be sent away immediately. However, the Lord's perfect timing, the rabbi came into the office. She looked much more approachable, and when the secretary showed her the tanica, she smiled and immediately accepted it, thanking us very kindly. As we went out, we were inwardly thanking the Lord for his overruling. As the door closed, behind us we remembered the Bible c CD inside the Tanika, which, as you know, has the New Testament in it. We felt we must immediately go back and tell the rabbi. This time she came to the door herself. So we explained the situation and told her about the CD thinking she would immediately give it back to us. She looked at it thoughtfully and smiled and said, No, that's all right, I would like to have it, thank you. Later we prayed about it and asked the Lord that she might even contact us and ask for more for her congregation. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while we, he talked with us by the way and while he opened up to us the scriptures, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 24 and verse 32. It is always, not always possible to leave scriptures in surgery waiting rooms. But on this occasion we were able to leave Hebrew scriptures and a Trinitarian Bible, Bible Society Bible at a dental surgery near to where we had parked the car. Then we walked up a long steep road and rang a bell, but there was no answer. The house next door also had a, a mezuzah, so we rang that bell. Again no answer. We then heard a voice from somewhere and realized it came from a woman of the previous house. 
she was somewhat suspicious at first, but softened when we told her we just wanted to give her a gift to help to thank the Jewish people for the many blessings the world has received through them and through the scriptures. And, and this she said, no, I don't think Jewish people have been a blessing any more than any other people. And with tears in her eyes, continued, there are some pretty bad things happening in Israel right now. It makes ve me very sad. Then she reached out and accepted the scriptures with thanks. We were very surprised and later thanked the Lord that he had moved our heart to accept the precious scriptures that alone can bring peace to her heart through the Prince of Peace, their own Messiah. How wonderful that we heard her faint voice while we stood outside the door of the next house. The next lady who responded asked us, Are you from the shul? We explained who we were and about the precious gift we had for her. She then said, We had just caught her because she was on her way out to collect her daughter from school. She received the scriptures so gratefully, saying, Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Immediately at the next house, scriptures were also received with many thanks, although the lady was somewhat puzzled that such a wonderful gift should be given freely. Finally, after a couple of schools in this Jewish area had received sets of scriptures very willingly, we walked up yet another steep hill and saw a small theatre. Knowing how many secular Jewish people are interested in theatre and are often involved with it, we went in and found a group of people inside, many of them Jewish. We offered the Tanaka, New Testament and CD. They were very pleased and said they would make a good resource for various productions. Of course, we pray that they will be curious enough to read them for themselves. We will ask again for your wonderful prayer support. The days are darkening and everything is moving fast. May the Lord enable us to work and prosper the distribution whilst it is still possible to give the scriptures in this way. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. The first epistle of John chapter 5 and verse 14 on recent visits to meetings about the work, various friends have told us of encounters they have had with Jewish people, how they have offered scriptures which have been gladly accepted. Do let us know of these encounters by writing to the office as we can print them anonymously in passing them on. Such accounts Encourage others to give scriptures as the Lord directs and enables. It never ceases to amaze me. Those wonderful, wonderful reports that are received from Joy Browning and the others. Almighty God, Jehovah, it is with a thankful heart that the word, the Jewish scriptures are still being able to be distributed, not just in London, but in other, other places here in Great Britain and in other parts of the world. 
and may each one that is distributed be read and open the Holy Spirit to open the heart of the reader. And for those too who occasionally will not accept the scriptures, whose hearts are hardened, oh, have mercy, O oh God. And those that are drawn into other matters, like that man, that husband who prevented his wife from keeping the scriptures, may his heart be softened. And may that dear, dear woman who so wanted the scriptures to be able to have them. For you are the God who does hear prayer. A prayer means answer. And that is the encouragement. The prayer meaning answer is answered. And for all these dear ones who pray behind the work of the society for the distribution of the Hebrew scriptures. Because Joy and Roberta and these dear, other dear, dear ones need that prayer support. And may there be more and more openings. Keep, keep open in these days the days which are darkening, the days which come against the, both the distribution of thy word to, to the Jews and against the gospel going to every creature, whether it be Jew or Gentile alike. That the victory of the Messiah will be outworked and hearts will be continue to have the opportunity to receive the word of God and, the, and their hearts will, will be opened to receive him who is life eternal. For this is asked through Yeshua and for thy glory. Amen. Now, and uh, sins to be confessed. Sins, yes, not just here in Great Britain, but sins throughout the whole world. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 23. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. And what is this? This request. It is the undermining of the supernatural. The destroying of interest in the transcendent God. Autonomous man setting himself up as God the disappearance of the fear of God. Now going back right to the beginning of the program when I spoke about Samir in Bhutan. He he had seen a transcendent God without a doubt, brought up in another religion, the God broke through there. And no matter what the opposition against Samir, he has so seen the fear of God, the reality of God. And that is something which is so missing in these days in Western society. Because it is, it is the autonomous man setting himself up as God 
in the place of God, saying, I, there isn't a God. Or should there be a God? I don't need God. And what a sin this is against the Almighty. Because it is denying the supernatural God of creation. The supernatural God who even sustains, even gives the breath to those who deny him. O oh God, bring before thee the sins of autonomous man setting himself up as God. The sins which which undermine thyself as the living God still working in the supernatural in these days working in the supernatural in countries which have been closed to the gospel working in the supernatural making yourself known by dreams and visions working in the supernatural, opening the hearts of, of Buddhists in Burma, opening the hearts of Imams and Mullahs in various countries, particularly in Africa and the Middle East. And the cry is that in the repentance of these sins, in Western countries, that you will have mercy, that you will forgive, and that you will restore the supernatural which convicts of sins here in Western countries and restores that fear of God, that which gives God his rightful place both in the individual life and in nations for this is asked through the name which is above all other names the name which you love to hear on the lips of your children that of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen Continue this reading from Channel of Revival, very much centering in these days on, on that looking for God coming in the supernatural, the supernatural manifestation of himself. That's why I've got to get out of the way these blockages. Of, of the sins which have, have come before God. Instead, we need to be in that prayer which takes hold of God. Because prayer, as you say, means answer. And undoubtedly, as we read through further this biography of Duncan Campbell by Andrew Woolsey, we will be encouraged, we will be challenged to take hold of God and to pray through, just as these dear ones did in 1949. And throughout that revival, which lasted until 1953, There was nothing complicated about Duncan's preaching. It was fearless and uncompromising. That's wonderful, isn't it? Fearless and uncompromising. Nothing to do with interfaith. Nothing to do with churches together. Nothing to do with the Alpha Course. Uncompromising. Nothing to do with the Church of Rome. No compromise whatsoever with any of those. 
he exposed sin in its ugliness and dwelt at length on the consequences of living and dying without Christ. Compromising with those other things that has been mentioned takes away the conviction of sins and the realization of living and dying without Christ because people are being basically being kept in their sins because they're not being called to repentance because they're relying on that which is outside of the work of the Holy Spirit the work of the words of man and woman rather than that the word of God being preached in function of the Holy Ghost and bringing conviction to hearts which are blackened with sin the penetrating gaze on the congregation and perspiration streaming down on his face he set before men and women the way of life and the way of death it was a solemn thought to him that the eternity of his hearers might turn upon his faithfulness he was standing before his fellow men in Christ's stead and could be neither perfunctory nor formal his words were not just a repetition of accumulated ideas but the expression of his whole being he gave the impression of preaching with his entire personality, not merely with his voice. That's preaching in these days of little sermonettes or whatever it is, little talks, tittling the fancies of the hearers. Here was a man pouring out his whole being how he knew that eternal destinies rested upon the word of God being delivered in all its power in all its conviction it was what prophetic preaching were told where is that prophetic preaching these days? Sadly, not many are doing this. Because why? They don't have the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost who speaks through prophetic preaching. The intellect can't. Preach prophetic preaching. And the hearers were called to make a clear choice. Nothing here of pampering. Nothing here of playing around. Trying to make fe people feel wonderful that they, they're doing this, that and the other. To, to please God. Oh. No. It has to be the work of the Holy Ghost within the heart, bringing firstly to repentance and then to complete, total surrender to God and total commitment to all the will of God for the individual life. And that costs it costs everything because it simply 
loses interest with the things of this world and commits itself entirely to God for whatever God might want to do through the individual life. And here he was saying, make a clear preaching for a clear choice for there was no middle path in other words, there was no compromise. What is there with the interfaith and the churches together and uh, the Alpha Course and the rest? The Church of Rome, this compromise. This basically looking for a path which will bring together the thoughts, the intellect, rather than that which is of the Holy Ghost. During the revival, the wrath of God was emphasized and coming judgment. Yes, he preached prophetically and he emphasized the wrath of God and coming judgment. Oh God, in these days, Restore that which emphasizes thy wrath against what is going on being called Christianity in church in most many, many places which has compromised thy word which has gone against thy word which has apostatized from thee so raise up those filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire who will emphasize thy wrath and that there is a coming judgment against that and those who have basically thrown out thy word and have brought in instead the opposite to it to compromise with the world, the flesh and the devil. Duncan would have none of such things. And that is it. May there be more and more having that same Holy Ghost within them as Duncan Campbell displayed. I've heard him preach, not, not in person, but I've heard recordings. And my, what a man of no compromise. God had given him this emphasis once he tried to be more pleasing in the presentation of truth, but without effect, and in spite of constant criticism, continued to press the flaming sword into the very heart of the foe, resisting every effort to make him retreat. No compromise! And this servant of God likewise, says unto that which seeks to compromise. No compromise. God will spew you out of his mouth if you were ever there. Leaving a service one night after listening to a famous preacher, who was noted for his positive gospel, he found himself beside another minister who had often censured his messages. The sermon they had listened to was on Paul's word to the Philippian jailer. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 
What did you think of that? His critic asked. No telling him to flee from wrath to come. Maybe not, replied Duncan slowly. But you must remember that the dear man was already in full flight. While he thundered the judgments of God unsparingly on those who continued in sin, there was a beautiful tenderness when he addressed those seeking Christ in true repentance. The jewel of grace shone more brightly against the backcloth of law and judgment. Indeed, those who listened sometimes saw his countenance glow with light as he dwelt on the love of Christ and God's welcoming to returning sinners. Yes, there is that, that grace, God's welcome welcoming returning sinners. But the sinners have to be awakened first to realize that they are sinners before they will turn to those welcoming arms of the loving Father. Undoubtedly, the insistence on the true knowledge of sin and genuine repentance was one of the reasons for the deep conviction of sin which characterized the movement. Nothing there of just signing a piece of paper and saying, oh, I, oh I'm sorry, God. For... No, a deep, deep conviction of sin and a genuine repentance Because genuine repentance will lead on to receiving the fullness of God and wanting to go on further with God. At times the preacher's voice was drowned with the sound of men and women weeping uncontrollably. That's true, true move of God's Holy Spirit. A deep move of the supernatural manifestation of God upon the hearts of hardened sinners. And seeing that, seeing Calvary, yes, seeing themselves in their sins, and then seeing Calvary, Seeing Jesus there, giving his life for them personally. And it's only when we have seen Calvary that we will never be the same again. We will never want to go back to the old things, the old life. Because you will see what Jesus has done for us. And don't be surprised then if he comes and says to you, I've done this, this for you. What will you now do for me? What will you give me? Instead of in these days it is that which calls itself Christianity, which is centered upon the self-life, centered upon what God give, God give me this, God give me that, God do this and the other. Instead of hearing, what will you give me? What will you do for me? On occasions, he found it necessary to stop preaching because of the distressful manifestation by those whose consciences had been awakened. 
men broken in spirit, wept openly over their sin. Here is one working at Pete's on the moor, and suddenly bursts into a flood of tears. Why am I crying? he asks. I, I didn't used to be so soft. He remembers the two ships that had gone down under him at Dunkirk. And he had shown no fear. Now he trembles, hastening as hastening home as he goes to the barn and yields with prayer. Oh God, if it is my surrender you want, you got it now. Another who had been given up by the ministers as totally indifferent is cycling along the road with the word of God pounding in his brain, causing him to dismount. It seems that hell has opened up, spitting out balls of fire on the road before him. My, oh God, It is that supernatural manifestation of thyself that we need in these days. Where even bowls of fire are seen as it were to be coming out from the roadside. So convicted of sins are those who are so indifferent to thyself in these days, those who deny thyself, those who believe that they are saved and they are not saved, because they have come to thee another way, tried to come to thee another way, through another religion, a no religion, have come to thee through the Look to come to thee through the Alpha Course of the Church of Rome and its works of men. Bring thy fire down, O oh God, in these days. And do that which only thyself can do. Go before us, O oh God, and prepare the way. For a mighty return to thyself by that which calls itself the body of Christ. Through their repentance of being so indifferent, so cold to thyself. That when they are right with thyself. Then you will hear. And you will answer. For this is as through the name which you cannot deny that of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you shall be glorified through the Son. Amen.